Good evening, members of council and viewing audience on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. If we could please stand for a moment of silent reflection and remain standing for O Canada. Thank you. Members of council, you had a chance to look at items on the agenda. Is there any conflict of interest? None noted, thank you. Adoption of the minutes meeting held April 27th, 2021, being moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malosh and Councilor Riccio Spagnolo, all in favor. That carries, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of mayor's comments. Last week we wished to, uh, Friends of mine, uh, re happy retirement, Dan Hennen. Um, many of you know Dan from his days working at Centennial Arena. Most recently, Dan was working in our parks division. Earlier this year, Brad O'Neill retired from our public works department and Dave Grondon retired from our seasonal parks division. We wish Dan, Brad and Dave well in their retirements. From May 9th to May 15th, we celebrate National Police Week. This year's theme is working together to keep our community safe. Public safety involves a collaborative effort with police agencies and between police services, first responders, as well as social, social and community organizations. We thank LaSalle Police Service for their commitment to keep our community safe. There are many businesses and organizations who partner with LaSalle Police and together they all play a critical role to protect our community. May 10th to the 16th is National Nursing Week, which is dear to my heart as my wife is a retired nurse and my daughter is a nurse in the ER. And we sincerely thank all nurses across Essex County and Windsor for their commitment and determination to help us through this COVID-19 pandemic. They are an important part of our community during this pandemic and every day. <clears throat> Today, May 11th is Ontario's annual day of action on litter. A day to encourage everyone to work together to raise awareness about the impacts of litter and how we, we can reduce waste. It is a reminder of the importance of our LaSalle green spaces and parks. We thank you for putting litter where it belongs. And a reminder to please complete the Canada 2021 Census. Your responses will help plan services that support our employment, education, public transportation and hospitals in our community and in our region. And as the weather continues to improve, it can be frustrating as we deal with the continuing pandemic restrictions. While this restriction medicine can be difficult to understand and accept, the medical professionals and senior levels of government can continue to believe that this is the best course of action. We, like most residents, Lack forward, look forward to the day that we can get back to the new normal and provide the services that our residents have come to expect and enjoy. However, until that day comes, we must abide by the rules as set out by the provincial government and local public health officials. We continue to advocate for a balanced approach, but these decisions are difficult when trying to balance the needs of many. 
please continue to follow the health guidelines regarding masking, social distancing, avoiding crowds and gatherings. Hopefully the positive trends will have been, we've been seeing recently will continue and we can put this all behind us. With that, we come to our reports regarding Richmond Court development and sidewalk. We have some delegations. Um, before we start that, Mr. Militia, do you want to give? Oh no, this is just, we don't have to do requests. Sorry, that was for the other one. Um, so what we'll do? Does Peter, you want to give opening comments, and then we'll go to the delegates, and I'll just we have. Uh, Godfrey Bacheya, Craig Stevenson, Diane Wilson, David and Maria Rowdy, Frank and Elena Piccolo, and Joe LaPera. So if the ones who are together, if they're speaking separately, everybody will have five minutes. If you're speaking together, it's still five minutes. And with that, we'll go to Mr. Mara. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so tonight's report uh, before you, uh, public PW14, uh, dash 2021 is a report for the reconsideration that occurred uh, from a November 24th council meeting. Um, so tonight's report kind of summarizes what occurred um, and provides a recommendation to move forward. Um, a previous report was prepared uh, by myself. That report was entitled PW-27-20 and that is enclosed in tonight's agenda as exhibit one. That uh, matter and that report was heard at the November 24th, 2020 council meeting. Um, it also enclosed in tonight's uh, agenda package as exhibit two is minutes from that meeting. The previous report um, that was heard at the 24th of November, 2020 council meeting um, had a recommendation contained within that uh, report to have the developer of the Richmond court subdivision uh, complete the sidewalks as originally uh, uh, anticipated and as originally uh, put forward as part of their development. Council voted that night on the recommendation contained in that report and that matter lost um, at the time when this report was being heard. Uh, later on within that meeting um, during council questions, uh, discussion ensued on this matter. As part of the Richmond Court development, there was a sliver of land that was owned by the town that was conveyed to the developer. As part of that conveyance, it was recognized within the agreement that there was some substantial offsite uh, sidewalk that was going to be installed in exchange for this, uh, this parcel of land. Uh, at that point during council questions of the November 24th, 2020 council meeting, uh, council voted to have this matter reconsidered. And hence, here we are tonight with, the, with this new re report in front of you. So I am going to kind of go through a number of things. I am not going to go through the previous report. Is It is enclosed uh, tonight to explain how the subdivision was created, what agreements were in place as part of the subdivision, how a number of two lots on Normandy were created, and that those were separate uh, servicing agreements, and the timing of when all of that occurred. That's all contained in the previous report, um, and certainly if there's any questions with respect to that, I'd be able to, uh, to speak to the matter. Um, that was spoken to on November 24th at the previous meeting. So tonight's, uh, tonight's report, uh, Mr. Mayor, I am going to try to share my screen to have a figure up available. So bear with me one second. Does everyone see exhibit three on their screen? Yes, we do, Peter. Okay. So um, the Richmond Court subdivision um, is contained uh, with respect to the uh, cul-de-sac that was built as part of what called Richmond. Uh, it contains a number of lots that front onto Richmond, and it also contains three lots that front onto Sovereign Drive. As part of the subdivision uh, approval, the blue lines that are shown on this, on this sketch were what was anticipated to be built as part of the original subdivision. Um, that was uh, put forward um, as part of the previous report and Tonight, uh, administration's recommendation continues to be uh, that those sidewalks be completed as part of the, uh, the subdivision. Uh, with respect to additional sidewalks that are being uh, sought after tonight for approval from council, uh, 
is the sidewalk in pink, this dash pink line across these other three properties, 2260, 2270, and 2280 Normandy. Um, in and around April uh, 5th or so of this year, uh, the town was, was made aware that the, the, uh, the residents within Richmond Court subdivision, their mailbox is on Sovereign. Uh, we, we had subsequently confirmed that with Canada Post, and that was just relatively recently confirmed as that is their permanent location. Uh, we, did not, we did not understand that until just recently, um, and hence is why we are bringing forward the recommendation tonight to construct this additional sidewalk uh, from, from, from Richmond to Sovereign on the north side of, of uh, Normandy. Uh, certainly, uh, that is not part of the subdivision agreement uh, that is being built on town-owned property, uh, and certainly the town would pay the, that cost of building it. It's important to note that the blue lines that are part of the subdivision, the town is not paying any part of that. That is the responsibility of, of the uh, developer. In addition to uh, some additional work that uh, we would be recommending tonight as part of this report, is that the town would be... Um, in reviewing and installing an appropriate designed pedestrian crossing, a PXO at this location of Normandy where Sovereign and the sidewalks come together. Uh, I, I, I say an appropriately designed uh, PXO um, because the fact of the matter is the, the design is warranted based on traffic volumes, traffic speed, pedestrian volumes. Uh, so we would have to do a bit of an engineering study to determine that appropriate uh, uh, treatment at this point in time uh, until that study is done, until that additional information is taken. Uh, it, it, it's unknown of what the exact treatment is. So there, there is a range of costs for that particular, for that particular treatment. So as part of, as part of this, uh, the, the additional sidewalk that I, I spoke about as the pink dashed line, that is in the range of ten dollars to $15,000 from a financial standpoint. And that can be uh, funded from the uh, pedestrian safety uh, uh, budget. Uh, with respect to the PXO, again, that can range anywhere from uh, $5,000 to $50,000. And again, there's a wide range there on the financial aspect. Again, $5,000 would be the simple PXO with signs. $50,000 would be the PXO with the flashing lights. Uh, I don't believe it warrants the flashing light PXO crossing at this location, unfortunately, until we do the uh, analysis and traffic volumes and traffic speeds. Uh, that, that is when we will determine what that is. Again, if, if council approves that PXO, uh, that will again be funded from uh, the uh, pedestrian safety initiative uh, budget that we currently have within the uh, 2021 budget. So tonight there are four recommendations before you. Uh, the first recommendation is for council to receive this report. Uh, the second recommendation is for council to concur uh, building the, uh, the sidewalks as, as originally planned and proposed as part of the Richmond subdivision. That is the, the uh, two lines that are in blue on the sketch in front of you tonight. That council concur and install the additional sidewalk between Sovereign and Richmond on the north side of Normandy and that that the town pay for that, that cost of that sidewalk. And that council concur uh, with an administrative uh, review, uh, engineering design and install of a pedestrian crossing at the intersection of Sovereign and Normandy. And that again would be paid for uh, by the town. Uh, so with that, Mr. Mayor, I will stop sharing my screen. Um, I am available for any questions should, should council wish to ha uh, have any at this point in time. Uh, if not, it's appropriate for maybe uh, to hear from the delegations. And once the delegations are completed, if council wants any clarification on what the delegations have presented, uh, administration is available to do that as well. Thank you, Mr. Mara. Okay, um, first delegate is Mr. Bacchia. I have to pardon, I have two screens here. So, okay, there I see them. Okay, there he is. Your, your, your mic is still muted. There we go, perfect. 
don't forget I'm a baby doctor, so I think like a baby. So, <laughs> good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of council. At a meeting of November the 24th, as was expressed by most of the members of the delegation with which I agree, we are not fully aware of the, the need, or not the need, but the plan to have a sidewalk between Richmond and uh, 7th Street. And, and we only knew about it a couple of days, you know, before the start of the work or the proposed start of the work. And that's why we wanted to appear before council. I moved here about 32 years ago. And in case some of you don't remember this, where I'm living, 2330 Normandy, was a former residence of Steve Budimir. So it's one of the old buildings uh, on Normandy. And for when I moved here, there was only one house at the corner of I think Ellis and Normandy. And the rest of the area was a farm farmland with corn and soya beans. So naturally, I've seen the development of this whole area all the way from, including the road to Huron Line. And each time I've never had any problem with the development of the town. But this time, from a personal point of view, I'm a bit concerned because uh, in spite of what uh, Mr. Mara presented, I'm not sure what the purpose is. In other words, is there a need for it? Or it just happens to have been part of an agreement signed with a developer. That's just one question because having been at home now over the last six, nine months, I hardly see anybody walking on the north side or interested in walking on the north side of Normandy. I think everybody's satisfied with the, the south side because that's the main walkway or sidewalk. Secondly, from my observations, as I said, having been here for so long, even when sovereign, would, sovereign was developed, I hardly see anybody walking even from the development to go either north, sorry, east or west. And the only time I've seen any human being standing at the corner of Sovereign and Normandy was during the time of schools and there are two high school kids who will come there just to catch their bus, which happens to park on the north side so they didn't have to cross the, the street. So my question is, are we doing it because there is a need for it? Or are we doing it just because there is a, a contractual agreement with developers? That's one issue that I'm not too certain about. And uh, secondly, it seems from today's presentation, which was not present on the 24th, that there's a plan to develop or create a walkway from Richmond back to Sovereign, which was not present. And if I understand you, it's possibly because there's, that's where the mailbox is going to be for Richmond, if, if, if my understanding is correct. That's why the recommendation is being made. So in terms of pedestrian use and safety for patients, I'm still not sure whether there was a true or there is a true need assessment that has been done to say it's necessary. There may be, I'm not criticizing it, I'm just speaking what I think. And then finally, and some of my uh, members of, my de of the delegation may speak to it. If you notice my house is on a gradient. And as I said, way back 32 years ago, this area was in a zone as a semi-agricultural land. And the reason that I was given by the uh, Budimirs to the family uh, was that the gradient was because there was it was for flooding, there was, there was, it was a flooding mitigation process. So if you're going to run the place, uh, the road or the walkway, all the way as you propose, right through my frontage, is there any, <coughs> any guarantee or wish that that will not destroy the land and therefore increase the risk of the flooding that was originally uh, the reason why it's on the gradient. Uh, these are my only concerns. Is there a need? Is it just to satisfy an agreement? And what is going to be done with respect to uh, my property, which is not on the flood ground, but on a gradient? Thank you. Thank you, doctor. You did pretty well for a baby doctor. Thank you.
Thank you. <laughs> we have now Craig Stevenson. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Craig Stevenson, I'm here with Diane Wilson. I'm going to be speaking for both of us. Um, now, we were here back in November, um, and I made my presentation at that time with regard to the severance agreement, which is on title to our property, which specifically states that there's going to be no sidewalk in front of our house. We, during the course of construction, applied for a circular drive. In fact, our builder, who was also the developer of Richmond, Tony Rowdy, installed the curb cuts. And he was made to put one of the curbs back because it contravened the severance agreement, which prohibited a um, circular drive at our location. So we were agreeable. You know, we had no choice. We had to abide by your agreement. Um, and simply, we've been asking you, the town, to do the same. Now, interestingly enough, as we know, there's a sidewalk, which we were aware of, and that runs along the side of our lot, down Richmond, uh, to Normandy. And when Tony Rowdy reinstalled the sidewalk, he put in a curb cut, or I should say when he reinstalled the curb in front of our house, he put in a curb cut for a pedestrian cross rock at Norman, Normandy and Richmond. That's an existing curb cut. And somehow he knew to do that, even though the town has told me they don't have any specific design drawings. Now, referring to Mr. Mara's uh, submission, in the first submission, there was a previous diagram which was produced by the engineers for the subdivider, which is part of your package there, which showed the sidewalk between Normandy and Sovereign. And so the town had a choice as to what they were going to ask the developer to do. And for some reason, they chose a sidewalk in front of our homes leading to 7th Street. When, as part of that subdivision agreement, everybody knew that their mailboxes for Richmond were being installed on Sovereign. In fact, there was a sliver of land required which there was a deal made for in order to install the side the mailbox. So I just, it's just puzzling to me how that can be discovered a week before this hearing. The fact is that an agreement was made with a developer for a sidewalk that doesn't need to be there. It's a sidewalk to nowhere. And now we, the taxpayers, are being asked to pay for a sidewalk that was there in the beginning and should have never been removed. So to me, that's just common sense that you needed a sidewalk between Sovereign and Normandy. We, had, I should say, we are in favor of having a crosswalk in front of our house, if that's what's required. The trail, the, the public policy reason for a sidewalk in front of my house was to connect Richmond to the trails. But the reality is, that the trail is on the south side of Normandy. That's designated in your official plan as a trail. All they have to do is walk 60 feet 
from Richmond across Normandy to the trail. And that trail is connected down at 7th to the other trails. So there is, in my submission, no need for a sidewalk in front of my house or any of the other homes, including Dr. Bashia's, all the way down to 7th Street. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. We have David in and or Maria Rowdy. And after that, it'll be the uh, Piccolos. Hello. Uh, now we hear you. Oh, that's great, thanks. So Mr. Mayor Council, thank you for your time today. Yes, we're talking about uh, this scenario involving the uh, sidewalk again. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, my wife and my household. Uh, you know, it brings a number of things that are already Dr. Bachia touched on this a little bit because a number of us didn't have time. I mean, I'm sorry, we're not made privy to the scenario involving this sidewalk literally until, like Dr. Bachia said, days, days before the construction was supposed to start. Uh, there was a statement made that, you know, it was like always part of the plan. Well, it wasn't always part of the plan. And had it been made aware to me at the time that I went to go build my home, I would have made some provision to set my house back the same way how, because this is in question and I built my home, I didn't do anything, uh, you know, disingenuous myself and put landscaping beyond just some sod on the area that we're talking about here, because it would be completely ignorant for me to put landscaping in new and then try to state a claim that I've got this landscaping. Why should I have to rip it out or let it be ripped out? I didn't do anything like that because I don't play games like that. But not at any point in time were we ever made aware that there was this kind of a thing going in place. And on top of that, I got a knock on the door from the engineer telling me to expect this to happen. You know, where I come from, we call that not being cool. So I'm very disappointed about the fact that it's now even being presented as if it was just always something that was happening. And look at what we're talking about here. At a point when construction is at an all-time high, we're talking about building hundreds of feet of sidewalk to bring a few residents their mail. When not so long ago, we said that mail carriers can't make it to their front doors. So maybe the problem ought to be considered to be solved by putting another mailbox location on Richmond instead of running a bunch of sidewalk. We're talking about one crosswalk to lead all the people from the sidewalk to get across the street. So... Is it stand a reason that somebody like myself ought to be directed to go down the road to the crosswalk, to cross at the crosswalk? Pretty obvious, I'm gonna probably walk right across the street. And I understand that it's not all about me. So I'm not trying to make it all about me. But let's be honest here. If it's about the mail, why can't they have a mailbox on their street so that in the dead of winter, nobody has come or wonder whose fault was it to make, and the road is busy. So I'm not in favor of not being safe, but the trail recently was maintained and people you don't have a trail to unsafe is on Bouffard. Yeah, maybe we don't want to. vision inside a public initiative to make it safe for them because the real truth is that there's no developer there that's on the hook paying for something so that he can be putting in the sidewalk now 
I don't know. I, I'm not trying to make it like, but to me, I would think that public's need to try to figure out a way to get a sidewalk on that street. I'll bet a lot of those people would be very happy to have a sidewalk on that street because literally winter, summer, whatever, they're walking on the street back and forth because there's no other way because there's a ditch practically up the whole side of each street and there's no provision being made there. And we're talking about throwing blocks over here because of a mailbox, which now, which I don't know, man, this is, this is nuts. I mean, at a time again, when construction is at an all time high, why would there be such a need and such a fervent requirement to put a sidewalk like this. And to be honest with you, I think that maybe if this is something that wants to be said as being done in the town's interest, then maybe it's worth considering whether or not when those opinions are incorrect, if those positions should be positions of salary or positions that are elected. Because otherwise, what is this that, that decisions are being made because of a mailbox, because of not knowing whether to put flashing sidewalk lights to cross a street? We're not that inept. I think that if the public's money, or let's say the developer's money, pardon me, were to go into what already exists up the east end of Normandy and just put a couple of crosswalks where there's already a cutout in the, in the end of the curb at the corner of Richmond, for instance, just like there is at Sovereign, put a couple crosswalks in. They're easy to maintain. You know, they're not rocket science to get done. They're not, you know, five, Now, when things are at an all-time expensive high, why are we acting like as if there's just no need to be cognizant of any kind of a, of a budget value and just, you know, get things done and let's, let's figure out whether we want to spend five or 50 grand. Let's, for lack of a better term, why not be a little bit frugal about some things? Mr. Audi, you've, you've exceeded your five minutes a while ago, but I gave you some extra time because you were- Oh, I really appreciate that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for your comments. We have Mr. and Mrs. Piccolo. There Hi, you are. good Hi. evening. Hi, I'm Elena and I'm speaking on behalf of uh, my husband, and Frank and I, and our household. So first of all, I just wanted to start with that I'm very confused as to why we're here again. I mean, back in November, we, we clearly went through all our, our concerns about the sidewalk and uh, everyone listened and council voted and voted in our favor, us, the homeowner, the taxpayer, and we were grateful. And it took an about face after the meeting closed and all of a sudden things were uh, reconsidered or they didn't like the council didn't like the way the the outcome was and here we are i mean i don't know i i, I thought we lived in a democratic country you voted and i we feel that that was the proper outcome and we were very thankful but here we are again so I just think, I just, we just want to say that it's very unfair and very disheartened with the town of LaSalle that we are at this point again. Having said that, um, when we purchased our lot or, uh, to build our home at 2316 Normandy from Tony Rowdy, we were the first build on Normandy. And there was no plans for a sidewalk we based the purchase of our home on the fact that there was agreement dated December 18th, 2015, uh, reference section 10, that talked about there's absolutely no sidewalks needed for the front of our home. So we based the purchase of our lot on this. Somewhere along the lines, this agreement got buried. We don't know what happened. It got buried or something else with the Richmond project. So, uh, another agreement came forward, which we were not made aware of. So 
I'm, I'm not sure of what the protocol is, what happens, but we feel that a sidewalk in front of our home is a huge security uh, concern because literally the, the sidewalk would be five, four or five feet from our front door. And that I feel like is a security uh, issue to us and our privacy. Not to mention, you know, our landscaping all being ripped apart. And I understand it's the town's property that you're talking about. I under, we understand that, but we are the taxpayer, you know, and there was a comment made by one of the councilmen at the last meeting, like, why are we even considering what the uh, residents have to say about this project? Well, we're paying your wages, Mr. Councilman. Our, our, our uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars we pay in taxes are paying. So that's why you should have, we should have our, uh, you know, our say in this. We're completely in favor for uh, a crosswalk and the feeder sidewalks up the side of Richmond Court and Sovereign. That makes the most sense. But to put, to, to construct a sidewalk from Ninth to Richmond Court to go nowhere is, is ludicrous in our opinion. And Normandy is probably a mile long and people walk it every day freely up and down Normandy. There's, you know, never an issue. And now that, that Richmond Court's been developed and now, cause we can uh, get the developer on the hook for the money, you wanna all of a sudden construct this sidewalk in front of five homes and now we're adding in sovereign because of the post office boxes. It, it, it just, I just think it's totally unfair to us. Um, and that's it. I'm just very disappointed that we are here again to have this reconsidered when it was already voted on, we won. And I obviously the town is not gonna stop till they win. That's what it seems like to us. So I'm gonna rest it right there. Okay, thank you for your comments. I'll just make a comment in relation, you made a comment that we live in a democratic society. If you would have stayed on for the whole term of council meeting, your issue was dealt with, but when we were going to the end of the meeting, some questions were asked, new information. They were not, some of the counselors didn't get the information the way they thought it was. So when it was clarified, they said, Hey, we're going to vote on this again. Well, they didn't do their due diligence then if the councilman didn't understand. Um, and I'll do respect. This is not a debate. I'm just giving you the reason behind it. So no. it was done democratically, but obviously not in your favor. But that's we'll go on to Mr. LaPera now. But it was in our favor. I, I, I beg to differ, sir. No, the, the reconsideration was not. Yeah, and that's why the we're here. yeah you're right. The reconsideration. Mr. LaPera. Good evening, uh, Mayor and members of Council and Administration. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for their time tonight. I know it's been a long ordeal on this issue, and uh, um, I think most of the delegation uh, uh, has indicated their concerns. Uh, my concern, uh, if, if the concern of the town and administration is uh, the safety of the people, then I do believe that there may be you know, two other options you know, as opposed to the proposed two sidewalk stretches, one from Sovereign coming east, and then one from which, again, if they come east, are those people going to be coming all the way easterly, all the way to seventh? That's a far stretch for somebody wanting to go east on Normandy, all the way down towards here in line. That's a far stretch coming in front of all these homes. Now, if you cut, if you put a crosswalk at Sovereign, you, uh, only you solve two two things. You eliminate all the people that are going to be basically coming out of Richmond and crossing uh, on Normandy. They're not going to be coming easterly all the way to the stop sign at Seventh to go westerly to go to Shoppers. Let's say right. They're not going to do that. We all know that. 
I wouldn't do that as a, as a pedestrian. I'd cross the street, which most people are going to do, and then I'd start going walking towards shoppers. So the safety there, you're eliminating a crosswalk at Richmond where the problem is going to be, where somebody's going to get hit right there. Why not put a crosswalk at Sovereign? When the people come out of Richmond, are they going to go three houses to the right? Or are they going to go five houses to the, to the left? I propose that they're gonna go easier, three houses to the right at one crosswalk, just have one crosswalk. Why have all these people come all the way in front of eight houses when they're not gonna do that? Cross them once, be it, play it safe, or option two would be two crosswalks, one at Sovereign and one at Richmond. Keep the people safe by crossing them across the road because they're not gonna be walking in front of people's houses and you're gonna live as, Put a risk out there that people are going to cross the road without a crosswalk that's my concern and i leave you with that and i appreciate everybody's time thank you thank you mr lapera and and all the delegates for your comments um uh, mr mara do you want to address some of those comments before we go to council questions uh yes i have i have three written down here um and and i think um I think the notion of the first one is what is the rationale for the, the uh, sidewalk? Um, certainly council's policy has been on new developments that we provide uh, connections for new developments um, within, within the town to provide them connections into the existing trail system. Uh, that was what we were intending and in working on trying to achieve here. Certainly when the sovereign Baxter subdivision was created, that policy was not in place. That's why you have seen that actual subdivision go in with no sidewalks. Uh, today's day and age, uh, that is uh, the requirement and the policy that has been in place for uh, a few, uh, at least a decade and a half now. Mr. Solani can, can summarize uh, that if, uh, if council wishes on how long that has been in place. Uh, certainly uh, that is how this has kind of transpired and what the needs are. Certainly we are ensuring that any new developments that come along uh, pay for new developments and pay for growth, not the taxpayers. And certainly it's the responsibility of those developers when they create those lots and bring in the additional residents to the town and the additional houses that they are provided an opportunity to connect to our uh, extensive trail system, which has, has, has received uh, plenty of accolades over the years. Uh, with respect to the grading in front of uh, Mr. Ba Mr. Bachia's house, uh, certainly uh, that is going to be something that has to be dealt with with respect to how we get the sidewalk in. I can say that uh, Mr. Bachia, at the time when the house was built, I'm sure there was no floodplain mapping and or no flood, flood analysis that was done in this area. That was done, um, I'm gonna say well over 25, 30 years ago, I would assume the age of the house. Um, certainly uh, since then there has been extensive floodplain mapping. At that time, they looked at the, uh, they looked at the existing roadway and said, we'll set the house a foot and a half, two feet higher than the existing roadway. And that's what we'll call flood, flood proofing. Uh, certainly today's day, uh, this area has extensive flood line mapping. Um, and certainly um, all of these developments new, whether they're new or existing have adequate protection. So again, uh, the, the new houses were built. Uh, they are not significantly different in grade from uh, Mr. Bachia's. I, I would think that they are probably a little lower than Mr. Bachia's from that aspect. Uh, so certainly, um, Mr. Bachia's uh, flood gradient uh, will be uh, will be uh, certainly uh, not not a concern with respect to this area. But certainly the uh, the front lawn will have to be looked at um, when the sidewalk goes through, and certainly that has to be uh, dealt with. Uh, one of the other references from Mr. Stevenson, and I again I'm going to share the screen once more, um, Mr. Mayor was referenced to the original figure as part of the original report. And that's what I have in front of you tonight. Um, certainly this is what the original figure as part of the original report shows. This shows what was originally anticipated as sidewalks. And I've highlighted them in the purple. Um, so certainly the, the original proposal was to come down Sovereign, come across the three houses on Normandy, continue down Normandy up to 7th Street and, and uh, bring this uh, sidewalk down. Richmond, which was originally called 6th Street. That was the old 6th Street right away before the developer renamed it to Richmond. That is what was originally proposed. 
that is that coincidentally coincides with again tonight's tonight's recommendation is all of what you see here highlighted in purple will be brought forward as the recommendation in tonight's uh, in tonight's agenda um, in, in part of tonight's report, in addition to providing the pedestrian crossing at the location of uh, Sovereign Drive. Uh, so it was not just the sidewalk in front of these three houses, it was the sidewalk that went all the way down to, to 7th Street as part of the uh, original uh, design. Uh, so I will stop sharing and hopefully everybody reverts back to uh, the standard uh, view here. So those are the three points that uh, I, I wish to, uh, to kind of reply to and respond to uh, Mr. Mayor uh, with that. If there's any other questions that council has, I'd be happy to address them uh, either through myself or other members of administration. Peter, maybe you could address the comment in relation to why don't we put another mailbox there? Certainly. Um, locations of mailbox are chosen and, and or governed by Canada Post. The Town of LaSalle uh, works with Canada Post on choosing locations. Uh, we do not choose the number of locations. We do not choose uh, putting in one mailbox for two or three homes, five homes, nine homes, whatever it is. Uh, they try to consolidate their, their business the best they can. They have an operating model that they need to work under. Uh, that's again, governed through the federal government. Uh, so certainly we work with Canada Post. Uh, they will put proposals forward to us on proposed locations. Uh, we do a general review and, and approve them from that standpoint. But the town of LaSalle does not have an opportunity to say, you should put one here and you should put one here and you should put one here. Uh, that is not our business that we're in. We're in the uh, municipal business and Canada Post is in the mail delivering business and they have an operating model that they have to work from and deliver on with respect to their, uh, their uh, budgets and stuff. Thank you, Mr. Mara. I'll open it up to council questions. We got, we'll go Councillor Reno, Councillor Carrick, then Deputy Mayor Malosh. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, this uh, question is uh, for Peter. Peter, there was uh, a delegate uh, here that claims that her front door will be five feet from the sidewalk. Um, I don't think there's been any uh, strange setbacks or anything that I'm aware of on that street. Um, is that a possibility at all to be five feet from the sidewalk? Um, through you, uh, Mr. Worship, I believe the standard setback of the houses is 20 feet at this location. Mr. Solani would be able to confirm what the zoning is, but our minimum setback is typically 20 feet. Um, I don't know exactly what they were built to, but if they pushed the envelope, they would have been able to build the front of their house within uh, 20 feet of that front property line. Uh, so certainly there's a minimum of 20 feet plus the sidewalk will be on town property a little bit more by a couple feet. So certainly not uh, five feet, but maybe, uh, maybe 20, 22 feet. I don't know if Mr. Solani has the exact setback at that location relative to the zoning. Mr. Solani. In this area, it's zoned R1. So the, the minimum setback in the R1 zone is uh, 7.5 meters, which is 25 feet to the front property line. Uh, no different than any other area where uh, sidewalks are being installed routinely in the municipality. There is the same zoning and the same setback to the front property line. Thank you, Peter. Larry, does that answer your question, Councillor Reno? It does. I mean, uh, when, when people come before us uh, about sidewalks, I mean, this is a, a common uh, concern because I, I think most people, when they're building their house, they, they want that long, uh, long green look in the front yard. I understand that. Um, but at the same time, I just want a clarification that there was nothing outside of the ordinary boundaries here. Thank you, Mr. Reno. We go with Councillor Carrick. Thank you, Your Worship. Through to uh, Peter, actually. Peter, we just uh, not too long ago went through a sidewalk policy uh, as, far as, a, as far as a pecking order as to the bigger sidewalk projects as opposed to the smaller ones and the opportunity to infill when we get the opportunity to infill so we can do the connections. So can you just explain how we got to that process? Certainly, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, certainly council is aware that there was a sidewalk policy priority put in place. 
uh, within that policy, there was a, we basically covered almost all the roadways within LaSalle that have sidewalks that don't have sidewalks and where and what the council wants to proceed with. Um, so certainly uh, within that uh, context of that, it's a large document. It's a large dollar value to carry on and continue to expand the sidewalk net network through every street within LaSalle. Uh, certainly a, a budgetary item that would have to be uh, uh, wrangled with uh, on a yearly basis. Um, but certainly uh, from a priority standpoint uh, with respect to the current priorities, uh, we have chosen with respect to uh, I call it the low hanging fruit or the easier ones to continue to deal with. Um, and they are uh, the most of the priorities at this point are completing some of the trail gaps. But it's also as part of that priority is for council to continue to expand the sidewalk where necessary through development approvals and processes where those uh, developments will require residents to eventually either connect to um, facilities, uh, and those facilities may include the, uh, the uh, crosswalks, may include uh, mailboxes, and may also include the, uh, the town's uh, pedestrian active transportation network, uh, which is the example that is before you tonight. So uh, that, that is uh, a, a bit of a summary of the higher level uh, magnitude of that overall uh, uh, sidewalk uh, active transportation uh, policy that was approved uh, recently. Okay, thank you. No further question, Councillor Kerr. Okay, Deputy Mayor Malosh. Thank you, Mayor Bonnie. Uh, through you to Mr. Mara, I guess I'll start with, I try to record everyone's addresses as they spoke. Were there any residents speaking for the three properties um, between Sovereign and I'm forgetting Richmond? I don't believe so. It, it does not appear so. Within the report, there is a list of the properties on page 20 of your agenda. Uh, there was a list of the notifications where um, the, this uh, notification was provided for uh, this report before you tonight. So those addresses were sent copies of, of this, similar to the, uh, the five delegates tonight. They would have received the same sort of notification. Uh, we have not heard anything from them at this point. Uh, thank you. Um, I asked that question only because um, I, I believe that portion of sidewalk is extremely necessary for the safety of the residents in both subdivisions to get their mail as well to be able to cross Normandy over to our trail system. Um, still not 100% convinced that other five are needed um, only because I use this area quite often and I, I just am having a hard time trying to envision these people coming up Normandy uh, from here in church, continuing on and then using that other crosswalk instead of crossing at that intersection where there's three stop signs, which is probably a safer area to cross. Um, but I understand what we're doing and I understand that it's important for our, our, our sidewalk policy and to continue doing what we're supposed to be doing in the town to keep everyone safe. Um, Last meeting, however, I think the confusion came out of when we voted against it, all of a sudden, no sidewalks were being installed. So what exactly is a developer paying for? Is it just the Richmond and the two houses? Um, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, that is enclosed as exhibit three within tonight's report. The blue lines, contained within exhibit three. Again, I can share my screen uh, if council wishes that I can try to um, highlight that again. Um, maybe I'll do that just so that it's clear. I'm just trying to pull up the exhibit here. Go ahead, uh, Peter. <clears throat> Does everyone see exhibit three? Yes, we do. So the lines in blue, so this piece along Sovereign that crosses the three new lots and the side yard of this house on, on, on Normandy, that is being paid for by the developer as part of the development and, and, and uh, the development process. This other line in blue as well, so that includes the piece that comes down Richmond, turns easterly at Normandy and, and carries on easterly up to 7th. This blue line is being paid for by the developer as well. Um, as I had mentioned, again, there was extensive off-site um, operations here for the developer 
in an extraordinary situations to connect uh, the, the subdivision to uh, development. There was a small parcel of land here that was owned by the town of LaSalle. As part of the agreement, there was an exchange for that parcel of land uh, to the developer in exchange for uh, additional sidewalk to be, to be built. So the lines in blue, as it contains within this diagram of exhibit three in your report tonight, is the responsibility of the developer at no cost to the uh, taxpayers. Thank you. I, I thought that's what you said, but I wanted to be 100% sure it was all five houses. Um, so to clarify, when we say the developer is taking care of, the developer is actually the one installing those sidewalks, or is it an agreement where funds are transferred to the town and the town is responsible for doing the installation of those sidewalks? The, uh, through our development agreements, through you, Mr. Mayor, sorry, uh, through our development agreements, the developer actually hires the contractor, does all the work, and completes all the restoration to, uh, to get those sidewalks installed. So if, if we, and this is, like I said, the confusion from last time when we said no, we didn't realize the two blue lines on Richmond and Silvern all of a sudden disappeared as well as part of that. And I think that's where the big concern came out of that last meeting was um, we thought we were still allowing those sidewalks to be installed. We were saying no to the five on Normandy. Is there a way that we can do those two on Richmond and Sovereign and just continue with the three that connect the two subdivisions? Or is that because it's an agreement, not something we can do? Again, whatever council's wishes are and directions are tonight, we can implement whatever uh, council wishes to, uh, to implement. If that's the direction council would wish to give, uh, certainly uh, we will go back to the developer and let them know uh, that. Now, I, again, I, similar to, to a, 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 a comment from Mr. Stevenson um, regarding an agreement, uh, again, we would have to ask the developer if he would, if they would take this on. Again, there's no obligations to have them enter into renegotiations of the agreement. Uh, if they tell us no, and they're only gonna build the pieces that they were originally responsible for and council removes the uh, section across the five houses, I don't think we have any le legal recourse to go back to them and get them to pay for additional works that was not originally uh, spelled out in their agreement. So we would still probably have to pick up that cost of sidewalk between Richmond and Sovereign on Normandy if that was council's direction. Uh, again, uh, certainly uh, just for council's, uh, again, for council's information, that would be in essence providing a, a, a parcel of land that was previously owned by the town of La Salle uh, to the developer in essence, free of charge without the extents of extra work uh, that would be required to get the rest of the way down Normandy. Uh, uh, thank you. I, I appreciate that information. I said that was the confusion during our last meeting. Um, and I know during that meet, last meeting, we discussed the, the idea of having that crosswalk installed. And I think it's extremely important to get it because it, when we're talking about that crosswalk, we're not just talking about Sovereign and Richmond. We're talking about traffic coming from the subdivisions behind that front onto Todd Lane, who use all of our nice paths and actually come out into that subdivision there. And you can see kids constantly running and biking across Normandy to get to our, our safe path on the other side of Normandy. So I, I'm 100% in agreement with the need for that and would like to see that installed. Um, thank you for answering my questions though. I appreciate it. Thank you, Crystal. Um, any other, Councillor Desjardins? Thank you. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to clarify something. Um, I'm looking at notes that tell me that the um, agreements were signed for um, 2308 and 2316 um, in April of 2017, 2016. So that covers those two houses. If the develop per um, is agreeing or by his um, development agreement is taking on the other houses, making it five houses instead of um, the two. Is it his responsibility, as I would believe, to notify the owners who are already there, like Dr. Bachia, that there is gonna be a sidewalk and that it's part of the agreement he has, that he being the developer, has with the town, I'm just a little confused about whose responsibility is whose. 
Thank you. Uh, with respect to, to, to notice, um, certainly there are times where the developer is required to provide notice. Certainly I can appreciate uh, the, the reference to uh, these residents coming forward and saying the first time they were notified as part of the uh, installation was a couple of days before it was supposed yeah. to be uh, laid out. Certainly that did, not, that, that did not occur. It was put on hold. It was held off. Uh, we, 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 we dealt with the uh, delegates uh, request in November of 2020. And again, tonight we're dealing with it. Um, so certainly it is the developer's responsibility to move forward and provide timely, uh, to provide timely uh, notifications. Uh, certainly uh, it is something that, uh, that doesn't happen quite often on a regular basis, uh, just from the aspect of the developers are developers and our home builders, and they're really not um, into uh, some of that type of stuff. Again, uh, we have changed in light of a lot of the uh, situations with sidewalks and trails. Uh, you, you will be aware and council may be aware that some of our new subdivision agreements uh, have tried to really um, curtail some of this stuff and, and things of that nature. So what, what we are now requiring as part of subdivision agreements is that the sidewalks be installed within six months of the first permit being issued uh, so that we actually get sidewalks installed before houses are actually even built. Um, and certainly that's going to drive um, uh, the developers and the builders uh, concern with them with respect to how do they cross these sidewalks without breaking them. But it, it is really the only way to get these sidewalks in so that everyone knows what's happening and what's coming and what's before they're in front of their lots and things of that nature. Because what's happening is the developers are not adequately providing the, uh, the information to either existing homeowners or per prospective buyers and things of that nature. Okay, I, I understand that then, thank you. So it, it's a case of the developer um, who has this big sign up that says, these are the lots, has the sidewalks marked on that um, billboard. So it's between he and then the realtor and then the lawyer to make sure that the potential buyers know that there's an area for a sidewalk to go in. Am I reading that correctly? Correct on any of the new houses. Again, where they go across existing houses, we, we don't have the opportunity to register agreements on those particular uh, lots. So again, the, the three houses that this will be a surprise to would be Mr. And Mrs. Rowdy, uh, Mr. Bachia, and Mr. LaPera. And again, that, that same uh, aspect would be for those other three houses between Sovereign and Richmond. But again, they were all notified and they all have been advised now and, and are aware of what's coming before them. And certainly we're here tonight to try to come forward with a final decision and a move forward process uh, with respect to what we're gonna build. We were never notified. I appreciate that. And uh, I do agree with the um, pedestrian crossings to maybe help slow traffic down a little bit on Normandy because with the kids that come across from the park to the park, it uh, can be a little bit of a safety concern. So I think anything that we can do to slow the traffic down would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dujerle. Last but not least, Councillor Riccio Spagnolo. Uh, through you. Um, I guess this question to go to Mr. Mara. So I do agree that we should have crosswalks. I do believe in uh, public safety and um, with, the, with the park and the school and everything, I think that um, that is something that is definitely needed. Now, I believe it was maybe Mr. LaPera that might've recommended this. Is it an option just to go with just the crosswalk at Sovereign as opposed to um, all of the sidewalks. Um, and the other question I have is, I think um, Mrs. Dejarlis, Councillor Dejarlis touched on this as well. For the future, can we make sure that developers have this in writing? So then this is not always brought back to us for council to decide. Because um, I think it's, it's important that the developers take care of this um, with their future home builders. Um, I think that's something that uh, is really, really important. So it's not always brought back to council for us to, to weigh on these uh, heavy decisions as well. Thank you. Uh, with respect to the last point, uh, it is in writing within the agreements that the, build, the builder, uh, sorry, the developer is to notify uh, any prospective uh, home buyer. Uh, that is already in writing. That has always been in writing. What we are seeing is they fail to do that. And certainly uh, that's why we're here tonight is that that 
was a failure to to occur uh, with respect to uh, some some of these uh, these uh, sidewalks. Uh, with respect to the pedestrian crossing, uh, we are we are proposing and the recommendation is to provide the pedestrian crossing at Sovereign in Normandy. Uh, certainly, that will be provided at that location. Uh, but you do need to get sidewalks and things connected to that pedestrian crossing in order to make it effective. I, again, if we put a pedestrian crossing there with no sidewalks, I'm not sure what we're crossing because everyone else has to walk on the road and or if you're those houses on Normandy, you're just going to walk out your front door down your driveway and cross the road of Normandy like Mr. Rowdy had said that that's what he uh, he does uh, with respect to getting to the trail to the other side. So certainly uh, we could do, do a pedestrian crossing. That is part of the recommendation to put the pedestrian crossing in at Normandy. But if we don't provide facilities to get to that pedestrian crossing, I'm not sure how, how effective uh, that, that would uh, provide for a crossing at that location. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the question. Uh, Peter, just a question. Um, one of the homeowners would like to know, do you know who would have sent the engineer to their home to inform them that a sidewalk was coming in? And I'm going to guess that it was someone hired by the developer. Correct. Again, the developer is responsible for hiring the engineer to come up with the design of what is part of their subdivision agreement. Uh, and whether the dev developer hires the engineer to see the implementation or they hire a contractor, they do it themselves. Uh, that would have been at the cost and expense and coordination of between the developer and their uh, subsequent uh, engineer. So, this is, so to be clear, um, this is not the first member of the community that's come to council because the developer did not do or notify or follow, follow proper protocol. Um, and sadly, we are trying to mend fences here. Um, just a couple comments. Peter, if you could guesstimate the cost to the developer ballpark for the amount of sidewalks he will be putting in, excluding those three homes that we have to install the sidewalks. If you have an idea. Uh, I would have to say it's in the range. Again, now looking at some of the restoration that has to occur across some of those existing houses, uh, I would peg it in the range of about twenty-five to $30,000. Uh, is my guess. Again, that's a real quick uh, estimate, Mr. Mayor. I, I didn't have that number in front of me, but just looking at the magnitude of cost relative to the cost that I had already put together, we're probably in around that range. Okay, thank you. Um, and just for information purposes, I was remiss in not stating that you know, Councillor Pata could not make tonight's meeting for personal reasons. Um, and, and just to follow up on a comment, Mr. Mara, you stated <laughs> There are no sidewalks on Baxter and now on in front of three homes on Sovereign there will be. And that's because the municipalities progressed in that growth pace for growth and new sidewalks and any new development going forward will be paid by the developer and or trails, um, rear yard drains, et cetera, et cetera. So existing homeowners don't pay for the development. Uh, and then just on Deputy Mayor Malash's point, I agree with you 100%. Those homes... Uh, that back onto the trail, Dalton, Cabot, um, Mensarelli, I believe, yes. Those are all people that could now access that trail, come down Normandy, take the crosswalk and go to shoppers or shopping or whatever's in that, uh, that plaza. You know, there's an old saying, build it and they will come. You know, if we, if we give them a safe passage to a destination, they will use it. Right now, maybe we don't know the amount of people that are not using because they can't traverse that way. And we have 30,000 possibly being paid by a developer. And I'm always encouraging development and I like it when they pay and the residents don't have to. Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Worship. While we're on the, the, uh, the sites themselves, when, when we have the, um, the pictures up, the billboards of the lots and the stuff. So as it sits now, Every new development that goes in, there will be a sign that shows exactly where the sidewalks are, crosswalks, everything, that kind of thing. And also that um, maybe a recommendation might be that it stays up until the last house is built so that we don't run into this in case it gets torn down after maybe half the subdivision is being done. So at least it's seen up there. So it makes it a lot more clarity when we're dealing with things, these issues. 
Is that something we can uh, enforce the developers to do, Mr. Mara? Um, certainly that is a requirement of the development agreements now, and it does speak to, uh, to that aspect. Um, unfortunately, where the signs typically placed is the front yard of one of the houses. And when that house is actually completed and finalized and they want to finish their landscaping, no one wants a billboard in front of their house anymore. So unfortunately, some of those uh, situations uh, occur from the aspect of the development sign being removed. Again, as, as I had mentioned earlier, the new protocol now with new developments is to build sidewalks within six months of the first building permit being issued. So going forward, sidewalks are actually gonna be in before people start to even move into houses within subdivisions. Um, it, it, again, we, we would love to see it being done concurrently before the first permit being issued. But again, there's a lot of services that have to occur and we will certainly have to uh, deal with uh, damage to the sidewalk. Um, that is uh, a consideration and it always has been a consideration and it has been in this situation. Unfortunately, uh, the sign was, was probably erected and then removed because again, if you look at uh, lot, lot address 5980 Richmond Court, uh, if you look at the sketch or one of the exhibits within the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, report tonight was the first house to be built and that would have probably been where the development sign was placed and then uh, subsequently uh, once, once that house was finalized to uh, move forward, uh, it would have been probably removed. Okay, thank you. Mr. Militia. Mr. Mayor, maybe I can add a, a bit of context and a bit of history as to how we got to here. And, and I think it touches on the questions raised by uh, Councillor Carrick, Councillor Desjardins and Councillor Riccio Spagnolo. So about 25 years ago, the, the community suffered a, a great loss in, in the death of two youngsters or young adults, I should say, uh, Mr. Pyatt and Mrs. Destiny. Uh, that uh, unfortunately lost their lives and which really kicked off, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, it, taking that out of that tragedy was born the sidewalk, trail and streetlight program. And of that, uh, we, you know, we, we embarked on, on a very aggressive uh, approach of installing sidewalks where we could at our own expense, uh, at the town expense, as well as uh, requiring developers to start to put sidewalks in their subdivisions. That has evolved over time. And, you know, I've had the fortunate, uh, the fortunate privilege of, of being with the municipality all that time, as, as has Mr. Solani, uh, and who will uh, add uh, anything that I have missed, which I'm sure I, I will. Uh, but over that time, we have had a number of opportunities on the development side to try and encourage developers to inform the eventual homeowners as to what is going to occur on their property. So these are new homeowners coming in, not retrofitting into existing properties. Uh, and so we've tried everything. We've tried laying gravel down in front of them. We've tried signage. We've registered it on title. And we have gotten to the point now that unfortunately we've had to take the tack of, of, of having the sidewalks installed early on in the, in the uh, subdivision construction process as, as outlined by Mr. Mara. That is our current policy. Now that has taken 25 years to get to. Uh, we tried a slow process of trying to get people to agree uh, get developers to agree and get homeowner, homeowners, new homeowners to understand. Uh, but unfortunately, we've gotten to that point where, uh, as you aptly note, Mr. Mayor, uh, sometimes the developers, uh, the developers are supposed to inform the, the builders who in turn have to in, inform the homeowners. And unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Uh, so we have taken this tact of putting it forward and saying, hey, we, we will now um, require sidewalks to be built early on in the construction process. So that's how we've handled that side and the evolution that we've taken. The other side is retrofitting into existing neighborhoods and existing streets. And that is a challenge that this council will face, uh, is facing, uh, future councils will face and past councils face. We have had this situation in the past when we first started the, the sidewalk program back in 1999 we, we faced the same resistance, the same resistance from existing homeowners who did not have a sidewalk in front of their home. Uh, and we went in and, and installed one there at the taxpayer's expense. That's what we did. And I, I think our policy is quite clear that we would like sidewalks on every street, 
in every location because we believe that that is the best and safest way for pedestrians to move. That, that is what we would like. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have an endless pot of money and we can't get those installed. So as was, as was noted on with, from one of the, the comments from one of the delegates, yes, there are areas we would love to get to, but the reality is we, we can't get to them with the funds that we have allocated. We are trying our best to get to every location. And in, in this case, particularly, uh, we have come up with a compromise with the developer to have him install sidewalks, not only in his development, but also outside of his development in, 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 uh, in recognition for a trade of value uh, with respect to the property. So that, that's how we got here. And, and I know that it, it is difficult for some of the, the, um, the homeowners that should have been informed, but were not. And those that it is coming as new because they, they've been there for some time and now are realizing that a sidewalk is, is coming in front of their home. We realize that and, and, and that, that's not lost on us as we, we develop these policies, but we also realize that for the greater good, uh, these sidewalks are important. Uh, and you know, we've heard some of the concerns in terms of safety, in terms of location, in terms of, of how it will interrupt their front yard. Uh, but we've also heard some of the positives coming out after we've installed the sidewalks, particularly as homeowners look to move into, into neighborhoods. They like the fact that their children, uh, people can move around at, on their, on, along the streets without having to ride or, sorry, walk on the street. So th that is how we've gotten here. Uh, you know, again, it's, it, we're, we're not trying to institute these policies to be malicious in any, in any way. Uh, towards uh, existing homeowners. But we are, again, all the active transportation guidelines indicate that we need to have these safe pedestrian corridors for people to get from one place to another. And in some cases, it's only a small neighborhood like the Richmond Courts uh, um, development. In other areas, it's much larger. And, and we look at other uh, larger developments where we have these types of things happening. So uh, again, we, we understand that that, that this is, is difficult for some of our ratepayers to understand, particularly those that have lived there for some time and, and now are getting something new in their, in their subdivision, so, or, or across the front of their home. But th this is what we have been doing. And again, I will just caution council that this is something that past councils has faced, this current council is currently facing. We will continue to face this into the future as we go through, um, as we go through that. And uh, you know, with your indulgence, Mr. Mayor, I'll just turn to Mr. Salani, uh, as I know he's much more eloquent at, at talking about this than I am. So I will uh, turn to him as well. Mr. Salani. Uh, your worship and members of council, uh, Mr. Militia did a good job uh, in uh, going through the history of what uh, the origin and, and you know some of the, the reasons why not only this council but previous councils has put such a premium and such an effort on trying to do everything within their power to make neighborhoods as safe as possible. Uh, as we all know, Normandy is, uh, is a busy road. It's gonna get uh, busier as time goes on, as the community continues to grow and uh, evolve over time. So certainly putting a premium on, on building infrastructure that is safe for all residents is, is, is vitally important. And I think we also have to remember that we're trying to protect the most vulnerable. And that means the young children, it means the elderly in our community and people that have mobility challenges, people in wheelchairs, people that are in strollers and walkers that may not be able to cross the road. We heard some of the residents saying, well, you know, they're, they can cross the road. Uh, yes, from their driveway, they may be able to, but they may not, you know, be representing people that are going to move into those homes. People may move into those homes that have children or elderly people in wheelchairs and having a sidewalk across those homes so that they can get safely to a crosswalk, so that they can get safely to a trail, so they can visit their neighbors, so they can get to the mailbox is vitally important. This is not a local street with very little traffic. This is a busy, this is a busy road. So as time goes on, we are going to see more and more of the collector roads in LaSalle to uh, uh, wherever possible, particularly when the developers are coming in and, and we can have them pay for some of this infrastructure uh, when we don't have all the funds available uh, to do what Mr. Militia referred to throughout the municipality, it's incumbent up, upon us to use those opportunities and have the developer, particularly when they, we traded off some land here so that they could do some extra work in the neighborhood 
to make it safe for the most vulnerable, for those that have accessibility and mobility challenges. It's really, this is an opportunity that we need to seize on. And uh, it's not gonna be these five homeowners that are gonna live there forever. Uh, these sidewalks last for 50 years. So over the course of the next 10, 20, 30 years, there's gonna be very you know, different needs as people move in and out of those homes and people in the neighborhood change over time. There will be a need to protect the most vulnerable in, in our community. And the best way to do that on a busy road that's gonna get busier is to, wherever possible to have sidewalks on both sides of the street that are designed and built properly in keeping with our engineering standards. And it's not just good enough to have it on one side. This is a busy thoroughfare and it's gonna get busier as time goes on. Thank you, Mr. Solani. Um, and I'll remind council that uh, at our November 24th meeting, I made a request to have a sidewalk policy for Normandy. Mr. Mara. Sorry, just trying to get to the end. Yes, uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I forgot to touch base on that. Uh, that that is there's there's a small little paragraph within the report. Uh, we are currently in the process of uh, answering that council question. Uh, there will be a subsequent report. We're currently working on sketches uh, to show how and what can be built and who is who is uh, uh, affected and what is affected in terms of landscaping, driveways and things of that nature. Uh, it has taken us a bit longer because of, of, of trying to get uh, staff to do the, uh, to do the sketches along with uh, all the other uh, information. So that report will be coming forward uh, within the uh, next, uh, next uh, month or two uh, with respect to uh, answering your question or council's question relative to uh, reviewing sidewalks the rest of the way down Normandy. Thank you, Mr. Mara. <clears throat> it's, uh, we're always trying to learn from our past, I wouldn't say mistakes, but I mean, the sidewalks is just one little issue that we are now handling in a better way, as Mr. Mara stated, where they're going to be built six months after the first building permits issue. <laughs> if we did a sidewalk on Stewart, and no, and anybody on Stewart, I'm not saying we're doing this, but if we were, as a legal requirement, I'm not saying how we should communicate, but legally, we could go in there, dig it, and put a sidewalk in with notification, no notification. Is that correct? I just wanted to just, just make sure we have the facts. It's, there's legal, and there's the way we should do things. Legally, no notification has to be given if we're doing it on our property. Is that correct? I, I believe that is correct. Uh, again, uh, this council uh, through through the uh, the five councillors, the deputy mayor and the mayor are responsible for the public right of ways and what they wish to implement within the public right of ways. Um, and the direction from from the uh, the elected officials would be implemented through that process. And yes, it is town owned property, so we would be able to go and install that without providing any notice and things of that nature to answer your question. Okay, thank you. And I just want to make sure it always seems when delegates come, they feel it's them against us. When, when, when you, council was elected, we represent the 10,000 approximately front doors in the municipality. So sometimes decisions are made where some residents might say, oh, they didn't vote for what I wanted. Well, it's always, it doesn't affect you until it affects you. And th this, Mr. Salani said it very well. It's not just about a sidewalk in front of those eight homes. It's about moving these people around in a safe manner. And as Normandy gets busier and more people traveling, God forbid, I mean, we had, we talked about this before. We had deaths on Bouffard and a death on Gulf few years back. And we came up with sidewalks and streetlights at that time. And everybody just takes it as a given streetlights. In new developments, they put sidewalks at their cost, not at, the existing residents. So I, I don't want people to think, oh, well, there they go. They, they, they're not doing it the right way or this way, but we understand everybody pays taxes. And we try to make a decision that's better for all residents, not the ones on Normandy, because people say to us, oh, you give everybody on Normandy more than what we get because they pay more taxes. That's not how council makes decisions. Just, just so the residents understand, this decision is for the betterment of all who will use that sidewalk if there's a sidewalk that goes through it. So 
Any other council questions or comments? Councillor Carrick. So um, I agree with, uh, with uh, the sidewalks. I think uh, I supported sidewalks from the beginning and I keep supporting sidewalks again. I think we need to take every opportunity to infill as we move sidewalks up and down wherever the opportunities may be. Understanding that we have a policy in place but some of the ones that were brought up cost a lot of money. So we need to take advantage of where we can to connect sidewalks in the community to make a safe passage. So I will make the motion to move the recommendation. Okay, just so we're clear, Councillor Carrick, there are four recommendations. Are you recommending all four? Uh, yes, the moving the recommendation, that's part of the recommendation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Reynolds. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. Um, you know, in concerns to the last meeting, um, I think this uh, looks very familiar as I believe Councillor Carrick uh, moved the motion last time and I seconded the motion at that time as well. Um, you know, some of the comments that have been added by administration, uh, some of the most important ones were there, there was a plan, there was a purple line that we saw on a street that didn't even have the same name as it does now. So we know that that's been around for a while. But um, the other thing is, is, is the comment that Mr. Solani made really hits home to me, is that things change. And today we may have five very mobile people in those homes, but in five years, we might have young families that can't necessarily negotiate that cross at the end of their, their driveway. Um, you know, in respect uh, to Dr. Bechet, uh, I almost feel like I need to apologize to him because uh, if he built 32 years ago, um, 32 years ago, I was driving my dad's truck down a dirt road in front of his house uh, and sneaking through the bush where I wasn't supposed to be driving, which uh, led to all this development now and, and things change. And, and that was another important comment. Things do change. And that road is busy. It is not just a regular little neighborhood road like Huron Street or something like that. This is a busy road. And for the, we, we look at, at what we need to do for the future, not just for what's in front of us. We talk about when we pay for things, we're paying for things uh, so that, that our future generations aren't taxed. We, we always talk about the future and, and not messing up the future just to, for the convenience of today. And I do believe um, as having uh, family members that are, are, are having changes in their mobility issues, I'm seeing it in my own family. Um, I do believe that this is the right thing. All four are the right thing to do. I thank Councillor Carrick and I will second that motion. Thank you, Councillor Reno. Any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call to vote. All in favor of the motion? Councillor Carrick, Councillor Reno, Councillor Desjardins. Motion carries. Thank you. No committee matters for council action. We have 2021 first quarter property tax write-offs. Deputy Mayor Malosh. I'm, I'm not sure if Mr. Langwise wants to speak on it, but I was just going to motion to receive. <laughs> Mr. Langwise, you want to say hello? Uh, hello. If, if there's any if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. There's not a lot of write-offs this quarter. So. Councilor Reno. Uh, he probably just answered my question. <laughs> so all I wanted to say was, uh, Dale, I mean, knowing that we're going through a pandemic and people are going through hard times and things like that, is there anything out of the ordinary? And now you're telling me it's not as much as usual. Yeah, it's a very low uh, residential amount, probably um, just to people challenging their assessments, probably more for uh, new construction. I think it's $5,000 in total. I appreciate that, thank you. We have a mover, Deputy Mayor Malosh seconded, Councilor Reno, all in favor. <clears throat> that carries, thank you. Summary of reports to council. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malosh, support by Councilor Desjardins, all in favor. That carries, thank you. Bylaws, four bylaws, all three readings. 
Moved by Councilor Edicho Spagnolo and seconded by Councilor Carrick. All in favor? That carries. Thank you. Council questions. I think this is the first time we've had a shutout. No questions. Statements by council members. Again, none. Reports from committees. Notices of motion. Councillor Carrick. Okay, I believe this is the best spot to put it out. I kind of wanted to say it for the last issue, but I wanted to wait to see how it played out. So I know we have a report coming on Normandy and sidewalks, but I think it'd be prudent of us to look at going from Sovereign up to Ellis in the immediate future. If uh, we can make a motion to have administration look at that, because it will connect all the way up from 7th all the way up to Ellis. And I think it makes the most sense to do that now. So it does connect all the way up so they can either go to Zares, they can go to CIBC, they can go to the bank. They don't have to cross the road at all. So when you get in from Oxley, come back in, Caddy, that area, you can join in and you can go down. You don't have to go across the street at all. And I think that makes a lot of sense at this time to pursue the, the connection and see what that would take to get that done. So for all the way from the Sovereign up to Ellis, on that side of the street, I think uh, they can make that motion that we, we move that forward and we look at that sooner than later. Uh, Mr. Militia, are you okay with that notice of motion? Uh, yeah, I, I believe we're, I, I think uh, perhaps if I can just suggest that that uh, was, would be more appropriate under the council question category. Oh. Uh, oh. If we, if we can just relabel it as part of that uh, and then the administration will come back with a report to fast track uh, the portion, I, if I'm understanding it, the request is to look at the portion between Sovereign and Ellis. Yes. I'm, if I'm understanding it correctly, uh, it will be uh, again because of our new uh, timelines for uh, council meetings. The earliest we will be able to bring that back to council would be the first meeting in June, and that's. And I just would look to Mr. Mara uh, because I, I believe that there's some uh, some engineering uh, in engineering that needs to be done in that area. And that again, not my area of expertise, but I'll, I'll turn it over to him. In terms of the uh, the time, if that timeline is appropriate. Thank you. Uh, certainly, that section of sidewalk will be uh, part of the overall review. Uh, the previous council question is to look at sidewalks on Normandy from Huron Church Line all the way over to North Woodmont. So, what we are doing is we will provide a summary of what's involved to do that, uh, what the cost is, um, and and certainly seek council's direction at that point in time on if they wish to carry any of these forward. Um, as part of it to see where and what budgets those fit within. Uh, certainly council is going to have to recognize that when we do bring this forward, uh, notices will be provided to all of those residents who we are going to cross in front of the house. Uh, so that uh, again, as, as you are considering and debating that, that, that initiative, uh, all of those uh, residents will be provided with uh, notice regarding that. So certainly uh, it will form part of the formal report and there'll be breakdown of individual sections and and as part of that report, if council feels that they wish to proceed with any of the uh, sections, uh, that decision can be made at that uh, particular date and time. Again, it's into June prior, uh, probably probably the second meeting in June by the time we get the appropriate information in hand to have an informed decision. Okay, uh, thank you. The reason I said it was because there's comments made, it goes to nowhere. Well, this connects it to Alice, so it makes perfect sense that it loops it all the way up. So I get the safety on both sides and everything, but. I think the quicker we can do something like that, the better. Thank you for the report. Thank you, Councillor Carrick. Confer oh, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you. Um, just to kind of piggyback on what Mr. Carrick was asking you about, um, every year I know we put funds into the sidewalk development area and we've completed this list of priorities. Um, could we maybe get an update on like, where we're at on that list as far as like where we're really going to focus on next or the top five streets because that's something we hear about a lot is you know our stewards our um what is it morton oh gosh I'm trying to think laurier is one of them but there's a lot of smaller side streets throughout the town that we we constantly receive feedback from residents saying when are we getting our sidewalks yes we're the older subdivisions so if we could maybe as part of that report also show where we stand with other projects in the town 
and where our goal is and where we're moving to next. While I appreciate Normandy, um, what you're trying to do is continue what we've just voted on this evening. I still feel there's so many other areas in the town that we really need to start focusing on. And I'd hate to spend a very large amount putting a second sidewalk on Normandy if there was another road where there's zero sidewalks with the same type of budget. Mr. Mara. Yes, certainly. Um, as part of that, uh, that that council uh, that council uh, priority list was uh, just recently uh, approved. So certainly, we can recirculate that again, as on the same agenda. Make sure that the council is aware of the other uh, priorities that have already been approved and, and things of that nature. Certainly, that's why I had said in come forward is that we will provide a summary of what is needed to build what we are what has been requested as a council question on Normandy. Uh, and certainly we would have to, if council wishes to proceed, we would have to identify the financial impacts and where that budget and or which uh, reserve, any of that stuff would come from while not trying to jeopardize uh, what has already been set out as priorities. So uh, we, will, we will circulate a secondary uh, report as part of that same agenda so that council is aware of the additional uh, information requested. Thank you. Okay, now no other questions, confirmatory bylaw. First reading, Councilor Reno, Town Deputy Mayor Malosh, all in favor. Uh, Kerry, second reading, Councilor Adicio Spagnolo and Councilor Carrick, all in favor, that carries. Third, final reading, Councilor Desjardins and Deputy Mayor Malosh, all in favor, that carries. You have a schedule for the meetings upcoming. Everybody have a nice evening. It looks nice and sunny. Good time for a walk. Um, thank you for viewing the audience who joined us on YouTube. And have a great